Welcome to this episode of Video Drone by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to talk a little bit about creating hyperlapses. So, and, and one of the things I wanted to start out with, and I wanted to double check this because I'm sure somebody's going to poke at me down in the comments below, which is okay. However, um, I kind of want to talk about what is a hyperlapse versus a time lapse. And there, there at least to me, there is, is a subtle difference between the two because in a time lapse, you basically have a, a, a linear compression of time, where a hyperlapse is a little bit in a, in a non-linear compression of time, as well as focusing on some sort of central stationary object while moving the camera. So that's kind of you know I think some subtle differences between the two. But uh, you know, with a hyperlapse, you see it a lot in in basically your B roll or you're connecting the material between messages in, in a lot of the blog videos. Casey Neistat is, is great at using hyperlapses. So one of the things I wanted to do is take a look at creating hyperlapses with drone video. So one of the pieces, usually it's fairly difficult, you usually have to stitch together a vast number of still images, and that's sort of what gives that breakup or non-linear compression of time, uh, because there's such a big difference in time. Uh, however, there's an interesting application which I ran across, and this is uh, actually by Microsoft. It's very much like the ICE product or the image composite editor here, and uh, but this one's not free. Uh, this one is $49, uh, as you see up here, and it's available in the Microsoft Store. I'll have the link to the Microsoft Store in uh, where you can get this in the description below. However, they also have a free down, downloadable version, a trial version, uh, that you can download. And I've downloaded and installed it. You can see it down here. I've installed it. Uh, and so we're ready to go with it, and I want to show you how this kind of works. So let's jump into the editor. Again, it looks very much like ICE or the image composite editor we've been playing with for the panoramas. And what we simply do is we go up here, we click this, and it's going to open up a folder. And I've already have several uh, videos prepared. So I'm going to select this video that I shot with the Spark over Lake Huron of some ships. And I'm going to bring this in. And here we have the video. Now, very much like ICE, the, the uh, timeline works basically the, exactly the same. So you can move the scrubber here to where you want and then you can move the uh, endpoints to crop the video portion that you want to turn into a hyperlapse. Now in this case I'm just going to turn the whole video into a hyperlapse. It's not a very long video uh, so it, you know it's about uh, 10 minutes uh, over here it's 10 minutes 7 seconds long so I'm gonna turn this all into one big hyperlapse so I'm gonna go up here to next and I'm gonna click next because I've got my scrubbers at the end now one of the things that you'll notice is the various settings you have up here so uh, number one it doesn't know the camera it does have a lot of built-in camera uh, camera settings for known cameras but obviously there are no drones in this list so we're just simply going to use unknown camera and then because it's an unknown camera shooting modes are going to be not available so the biggest thing we're going to have is um, the speed factor which we're going to set this up now I'm going to set this up this it comes default at 8 and if we look down here its output is going to be about one minute long at uh, an 8 uh, multiple of 8 so but what I'm going to do is I'm going to kick this up to 25 and so this is going to create about a 26 second video out of a 10 minute video which is going to have a lot of impact and which is going to be great for b-roll uh, now here's where you choose the output uh, both location the resolution and size uh, now the frame rate I'm going to drop it defaults to 59.94 I'm going to drop this down to 25. Now, one of the things I find with the higher frame rate, um, it gives it gives somewhat a odd feeling. Now, one of the things you probably want to do is experiment between your speed factor and your frame rate, and it's also going to depend upon a little bit of your output project's frame rate too that you may mix this into. So this can obviously either be standalone or you could be using it as some B-roll inside of maybe your your blog video. Uh, so with this basically set, one of the things that we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and hit next. And uh, I've already done this once because I'm going to speed this up. You typically won't get this box unless you're overwriting the file of the same name. I'm just going to click yes and let it go through its thing. Because at this portion, this is going to take quite some time 
to go through this. This probably will take about five minutes. Again, this is a pretty substantial computer I'm, I'm running this on. So one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to cut over. I'm going to actually show you the finished product uh, of this. And then what we'll do is we'll come back for some final thoughts at the end after the uh, video runs and you actually see the hyperlapse. Um, now, what I'm going to do, and one of the reasons I set it down to 25 is the end video, which you'll probably be seeing on YouTube that you'll be watching here in a moment it is going to be at about 24 uh, frames per second is what I typically upload to YouTube so uh, I kind of wanted to match it with that because you know if I went higher at the 54 it would simply be you know downgraded so let's go watch that hyperlapse So here we are back. Well, we're at the end. We've seen the uh, 25 speed hyperlapse. So we've taken 10 minutes, compressed it down into uh, roughly 30 seconds. Now, I think one of the things that you'll note is um, if I would have minimized some of the yaw sequences, I think it would have had a, you know, a stronger impact. Um, I don't know, at least my two cents producing videos, uh, when I do a hyperlapse, I want to have something that's more... Um, uh, you know, linear in fashion. So even if it's going in a circle, it, it's just going in a, in a steady circle around an object. Uh, and I think that's something that you could do really uniquely with, with a drone is you could circle an object, maybe say, you know, set it up to take five minutes or so to circle an object and let the clouds and everything move behind it. Because one of the things you notice at the very end, I really like the impact of that ship that's coming up and the clouds over it that, you know, down by the bridge near the end of the hyperlapse video. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can take and you can just create that whole hyperlapse as I've created and you can also take it into another program, you know, uh, like PowerDirector or Hitsville or something like that and edit those pieces uh, to create a more powerful a more powerful, is that right English? Well, it, let's put it this way, to create a better end product that fits rather than trying to edit it all in this because I tell you what it, doing it inside doing inside this hyperlapse program by Microsoft it, it's a little bit wanky because the scrubbers and everything uh, I don't really like them they're not as responsive as I, I think they should be so this would be one of the things that I would suggest is just you know take the whole thing throw it into a hyperlapse and then take the hyperlapse and then edit it in your editing program so that's my tip and my two cents so Hopefully you found this video interesting. If you did, hey, the subscribe button is going to be coming up over there on the right-hand side. If you're not a subscriber, please do. Also, let me know what you're thinking about for lunch or maybe if it's past lunchtime for you, maybe what, what you're going to have for dinner. So anyways, if you have any questions or, you know, maybe you have a better hyperlapse program, please let me know in the comments below. I think 50 bucks, to be honest with you, is a little bit pricey for this. I would definitely be a buyer for around 20, 25 bucks. Uh, I think they would sell a lot more if it was in that price range and they've already made the investment in the code, but hey, that's just me. So cheers, see you in the next video.